Let's look now at the uh, the cellular response due to cell signaling, activation of cell signaling systems. Now, uh, the cellular response could be of different types, but we can categorize them under three primary forms. The first one is opening of ion channels. And we are going to give the example here of ion channels found on nerve cells. And the example here is that of nerve cells found in the nasal cavity, in the roof of the nasal cavity, and uh, how they respond to odorant molecules. So molecules actually signals coming from the outside in that case here. Those molecules, they bind to receptors. In that case, here, it's a G-protein coupled receptor, resulting in the formation of a chemical signal cyclic AMP, which acts on ion channels, causing them to change conformation to open. And when they open, they allow ions, in that case here, sodium and calcium, to diffuse along their concentration, the gradient, resulting in the formation of a signal. In that case here, the signal is electric. It's an electrical signal that will travel from this neuron in uh, the roof of the nasal cavity to the part of the brain that is involved in interpreting uh, olfactory signals. The other type of uh, cell response involves changes in the activities of enzymes. And uh, we gave the example previously on um, the uh, activation of glycogen phosphorylase. Uh, under the effect of the activation of the adrenergic uh, uh, receptors. Uh, so in that case here, it's actually a series of enzymes have been activated, uh, resulting in, in that case here, a cell response, which is the uh, release of glucose into the bloodstream. So that's that's the second. The third type of cell response involves uh, changes in the level of gene expression. And the example here is that of uh, the lo uh, lipid-soluble uh, signals that diffuse into the cytoplasm, bind to their cytoplasmic receptor, and form a complex that would uh, diffuse or would uh, be uh, transferred to the nucleus to act as a transcription factor, resulting in the formation of specific proteins. That's what we mean by um, gene expression. Now, the activation of chemical signaling systems has to be regulated, and it cannot uh, go on indefinitely. And this is important for receptors to free themselves of the chemical signals so that uh, they can remain sensitive to future signals. And this is what we, what we call uh, signal deactivation. And there are different ways by which signaling systems can uh, deactivate the signal. And we are going to give a few examples, starting with phosphatases. Protein phosphatases. Uh, if you recall from the, uh, uh, the G protein linked receptors, uh, the second messenger cyclic AMP activates protein kinase as, as its first target. And that protein kinase, like all kinases, what they do is they transfer a phosphate from ATP by hydrolyzing it to a protein. And then when they do that, they raise the potential energy of uh, that protein. In that case, it's an enzyme and causing it to become active. So that's, that's how the signal transduction pathway starts. This pathway can be deactivated by the activity of phosphatases and by definition a phosphatase it removes a phosphate from a protein or from a substrate and releasing release it as an inorganic phosphate and by doing so it's going to deactivate in that case here the enzyme so this is one way another way is by the use of gtpases cells produce G gtpases and those they break down or they hydrolyze gtp into GDP. In that case here, they specifically hydrolyze GTP bound to G active G protein. And then by doing so, they render it inactive. So that's the second way. Third way is by the use of a third type of enzymes, phosphodiesterases. We'll give the example of cyclic AMP here. Cyclic AMP, the second messenger, is produced from ATP when the effector enzyme, and in that case here is known as adenylyl cyclase or adenylate cyclase, that produces cyclic AMP from ATP. Cyclic AMP is usually deactivated, and it's, the reaction is very fast. It is deactivated by phosphodiesterase, which converts cyclic AMP into AMP, the inactive form. So these are three ways. There are other ways by which uh, cells can deactivate signaling systems. One of the second messengers that is produced is nitric oxide, known as NO. Nitric oxide is, as you know, is a gas, and it diffuses very fast. And by the mere fact that it diffuses, it becomes inactive. 
if it moves away from its uh, uh, target, target molecules to which it's going to react. So the, uh, in that case here, its concentration is, is, is crucial and uh, when it's released in smaller amounts and it starts diff or it starts diffusing, it's going to become an active. Another example is that of calcium. Calcium, when it's released under the effect of second messengers, it can by itself act as a second messenger. And then one, one way of deactivating calcium is by pumping it back into its storage organelle, and which is usually the endoplasmic reticulum. So we decrease the concentration, therefore we decrease the effect, and that's how we deactivate. The last topic of this podcast, as I mentioned, is the intercellular communication. Direct communication between cells without involving uh, receptors, without reception, without cell signaling or cell um, or, or signal tra uh, transduction pathways. And we are going to give the uh, two examples, one in animal cells and one in plant cells. In the animal cells, the example is that of gap junctions. As you remember, gap junctions, they link the two cells through their membranes by special proteins that form like tunnels or channels. They connect some proteins. And uh, through those proteins, uh, molecules or charged particles can diffuse. Charged particles can diffuse from one cytoplasm directly into another through those gap junction proteins. Uh, the best example here uh, that I can give if, uh, is that of gap junctions found uh, between cells of uh, the heart. Cardiac muscle cells communicate that way and they use the uh, gap junctions to uh, quickly uh, spread the signal from one cell to the other. Like the activation of one cardiac muscle cell can lead to the spread of a signal which usually here is ions from one cell to another throughout the cardiac muscle tissue. And this is important and crucial to allow, for example, the, uh, the ventricles of the heart to contract as one unit. The other example is that of uh, uh, plasma desmata in plant cells. As you remember, plasma desmata, those are, again, uh, channels or direct links uh, between plant cells. And they involve usually tubes or tubules that link the, cyto uh, the endoplasmic reticulum of one cell to that of another cell. Those tubes are known as desmotubules. And in those desmotubules, molecules that are found in one cytoplasm can actually quickly diffuse and transfer to the cytoplasm of another cell. The best example that I could give here is that of C4 plants. C4 plants, uh, like in the mesophyll cells, they produce C4, they produce malate under the effect of pepcarboxylase, and then malate can diffuse in here and then be converted to CO2 and pyruvate in that process. So this is one of the uh, ways, quick ways to uh, transfer molecules or signals from one, one cell to another in uh, plant cells.